Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I am Gary Rogers. This is Grinding on Wine, episode, I believe, 42. Jesus, Frankie Washburn, what is good? If you've watched anybody rip a bowl very impressively and somebody film it well, now, if it sucked at filming, it's not him. All right? If it's garbage filmed, it's not him. If it doesn't look good, if the skater's too far, it's not him. Now, if it's up close, personal, right, looks good, every moment caught, Ladies and gentlemen, it was filmed by no other than Chris Gregson. What's going on, CG? The money, man. What's up, Gary? How Thank you, you for having me. Bro, I appreciate you being here. We've been wanting you to be on this show for so long because obviously Grinding on Wine is like this show where we're just talking to everybody that amazes us. You know, we got Uto's first English interview in the world, and now we have literally skateboarding's best transition, bold, big, air, whatever filmer, period. You're just, you're the guy. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. You're the guy too. We I, work together. I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I try. I don't do nothing impressive. I just run my mouth. And if you like it, then it happens. But you actually do something that takes skill. So now, you know, you're the man behind the camera. It's good to see you on front of it to put a face to people that may not know it. But, bro, you, you where does where does it all start for you, Chris? Where does it begin? I got a Tony Hawk board because of the video game. That's, I guess, where it really started. What? Okay, okay. <laughs> Eventually just skated and then me and my husband made a video and then that was how like, we would all just like share the camera or whatever. And then I grew up with Figgy and David Loy and Colin Provost. So they were all obviously ripping. So it kind of just like you start filming people that are ripping, like people kind of start seeing that too. And then next thing you know i mean i just like was always skating and doing both you know like yeah we made a bunch of homie videos and i'd make like all of like figgy and dixon and deloys all their sponsor me tapes because back wow. then there wasn't instagram or yeah any youtube or like you know we'd strategically make the sponsor me tapes like based off like i don't know figgy would be like i swear it was like when he was trying to get on altamont it was like, we got to use a Rocky Erickson song because, like, Reynolds is super hyped on Rocky right now. Wow. <laughs> like, That's like actually that. crazy. Just same with Dixon. Like, I remember, I can't remember what song we used, but it was, like, his, the one that, like, Figgy was going to, like, bring it on this, like, trip, this Baker trip to, like, try to get him on Death Wish. And that was all strategic, too, you know? So it was just funny doing that little kid shit. It's definitely not like that anymore, but... I know nowadays you could just at whatever company you like and they'll damn near just get it in their notifications and see you. And especially if it's good enough, you could just get a chance. So you come from a time where you guys all had to literally understand what that skater's favorite music was. No insiders, no nothing. Go out and film, make and create, and then throw a shot in the dark to become whatever they become. Now the list of your friends have all done very well. Okay. So They've all become legendary guys in their own right, and that is super impressive. David Lloyd's crazy. Love David. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's nuts. But so you're playing the video game. You get the board. You said you're always filming and skating. So when when did you just get good as shit, though, at skating? Because was there a time off of filming that you took to like focus on be like, oh, okay, my homies are ripping. I really want to rip, too. Or was it literally always simultaneous? Skating always came first. Like filming was just like what we did just to like make videos because that was like fun, you know. And I think at the time I was the only one that could afford to like get a camera. So I I, I just was the one that was in charge of it, you know. Okay. But we all used it and filmed and stuff. It wasn't really anything I took seriously at all. Like I always was like competing and <clears throat> I met like all of them through castle contests when we were like 10 years old damn so yeah we uh, all go like way back you know and like i think like that back to you like how you said like everyone made it it's like from a young age like we met at these like contests so it was like everyone was pretty like motivated you know or fired up to like skate and that like helps you get better when you're just surrounded by all these other kids that are like ripping and 
you know. Yeah. Now love the same thing. So now what what is the local park? Where are you guys all where are you guys all skating from? Where are you guys at? Uh I grew up in Irvine and there was like this skate park at uh which is now a boomers right off of the four oh five. Okay. But um it used to be called Palace Park and it was Boomers the go kart place? Yep. Okay. It was like the same type of place too. It just had a different name, but they had like a pretty sick wooden park in there. And like when that opened up, um, Danny Way and Bucky Lassick were there like the first day and met them. And yeah, I don't know. I, I had a, already had a board because of the video game. So I knew, knew who Bucky Lassick was and yeah, just skated there a bunch. My mom like felt safe dropping me off there after school because it was basically a kid's fun zone type you yeah. know so it wasn't like some scary gnarly park by the train tracks or some shit yeah so is this like are you the only one going to this place or are there other skaters that pretty much i well? mean like there was like other kids that like colin would go there here and there because okay. he grew up in huntington beach and like <clears throat> yeah just random local kids but not it, i was pretty much the only one there all the time i think from what i remember but yeah, not much to do in Irvine other than that. Exactly. Time. I was about to say, bro, I think like Irvine is just like, oh, we're in Irvine. All right, we're not anymore, like when you're driving yeah. 405. But to to kind of go into that park, what are some of the things that are there? Just classic, like what that was probably your 2000. So a wooden mini ramp, the classic wooden pyramid with a flattened down rail. Oh, yeah. Nothing pretty nothing too crazy it wasn't like nothing transition or no bowl or anything like that but then as i got a little better i like found van skate park which was at the block in orange and that had like the combi bowl and vert and all this other shit and that was kind of how i got into skating like bigger stuff Mm -hmm. and then at the time that was like kind of when i met david loy and figgy and all them and it i don't know i didn't really think that you would there was like a you were a vert skater or a street skater it, like i just thought you had to skate everything at the skate park you know to be a good skater to be a skater it was like yeah no, so no, i just yeah. always skated everything and vert kind of like was popping off just around that that time and there was always like a bunch of sick vert pros there so like i kind of was like drawn to that and then Ended up winning Tampa AM Vert when I was like 14. Damn. The year Nigel like kind of came in hot. Yeah. I remember that year. That was yeah. a very memorable year. Um, so so you go over to Huntington, the Huntington, which is Vance Park, right? It was it's, the Combi Bowl's yeah. always been Vance indoor, right? That's always been that park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same park in the mall. But then it got readjusted. They rebuilt that street thing later. Like that always wasn't that setup that was in the middle. It was just the wooden outside combi bowl, and then something else was in the middle originally. And then they added the street course in like 2013, 12. They had so many phases of that park. It was like when I started going there, there was like a concrete black bowl, there was a vert ramp, there was like a mini kids course, there was a bunch of mini ramps. And then Combi, and then they built, like, I don't know, throughout my years of skating there, they built, like, probably, like, four different phases of it, you know? But which is sick, because they just kind of, like, keep it, like, updated. Or I mean, now it's been closed for years, but the rumor has it they might open it. I don't know. It'd be sick. Rumor has it. Okay, so now somebody in chat says we are sad too, which I really hope you're not sad. Says Chris, do you know Rod Marks? I skate with him daily. He's close homies with Tony and has vids at the Birdhouse Ramps on his Instagram. I'm not good with names, but it'd be like that, bro. I know we meet so many people. It is insane. So now you come off the success of winning uh, Tampa Am Vert um, at 14. You said what? Not much success. That's kind of why I was like, fuck, no one cares. It gives a shit about Vert anymore. Like, I know, but I'm was- saying at that time, this is a while ago. So it's like you you, you kind of win a Tampa Am Vert contest. 
Um, do any sponsors roll in or is there any, like you said, there's probably not much success, but what happened to you after that? Literally nothing. Like, <laughs> oh, <I> shit. Was, <laughs> just, that's kind of what I was like. I mean, Vert was definitely like dying, you know? And, yeah. I mean, it was dead for sure, but like there was still Vert contest and stuff. And so, do you know, but do you like, know why? I, really, I mean, why, what, why? How, how did, yeah. How did Vert die? Like, I don't understand because the typical human that has no idea about skating is fascinated by Vert. Like, well, they want to watch that more than they want to understand how difficult street is. Skaters only love street because of like, we understand it. But like when you're a bystander, you're just like, why is that dude trying that kickflip from board on that big ass rail hella times and not landing it? You know what I'm saying? You're just like, oh, he must not be that good versus where it's like, nah, he's beast. The fact that he did it in three tries is amazing. Like, don't play, you know, but Vert just fell off when it was, it's very difficult and very, I, in, I think beast. it fell off the first time because Street got super big and that's like, was around like 89, 90s, you know, like, and then Street was like way more accessible to everyone. Like you could just walk outside and do it you know so i think like that made so many more people stoked on it and then like when i was i think like the video game definitely probably tony hawk pro skater probably had a like vert resurgence because i was like when i started skating you know and yeah. <clears throat> that kind of i was like oh like i want to skate vert because tony hawk or whatever and all these guys in the games and all this and that and then i think when i stopped skating vert was like a little while after that, it was like all the like bowl contests started happening, like the combi contest. And like, there was all these other events like that, where when I was a kid, if you wanted to skate a transition contest, you had to skate Vert. Okay. There wasn't really a, there was no bowl contest. I mean, there was like probably like Marseille and these ones going on that like, but like those are like, too obscure for like me at that age, you know, to know what, yeah. understand that. Or but. even getting to those type of places to skate into those type of things. Yeah. Like so, I'm like, so I think that's kind of like how it had its ups and downs, but now it seems to be pretty, everyone's pretty fired up on bird again. So yeah, bro. So. I like, I like that birds coming back. First off confession, never dropped into a vert ramp. I've dropped into a 10 foot pool and that's as big as I've gone. I stood on the top of vert ramp. I said, you know what? The reason why I haven't is because when I get to the other side, I'm not going in the air. Not yet. I think I'm going to go revisit it and do it, though. I think I'm going to go try to learn vert a little bit, but I haven't made that choice yet. I still have to kick for front crook. After I kick for front crook, I'm going to go visit vert. But um, yeah, when you have pads on, it's like you could skate for fucking five hours and then wake up and you're not even sore. You know, it's, it's crazy. crazy, bro. That is actually nuts. So you, you kind of like you said, you phase out of it. What are you skating now and what is happening at this 15, 16? Range? At what that time, doing? I was like pretty hyped on filming. Like I definitely was like getting better at it. And like as like Colin and Figgy and they were getting better like sponsors kind of actually like needed their footage and like i was the one kind of filming them and so i had i kind of like started taking it more seriously like thinking like oh, okay well if i have to give these all their footage to these companies like i want it to look good you know and that's when i started just like asking more questions i think about filming and paying more attention to videos and filmers rather than just like doing it because or whatever and then um shortly after that i was like 17 like just turned 17 and uh i was out skating with colin and provost and like i got a phone call and someone was like yeah this is jeff rally we want you to work for flip and i just literally like hung the phone up and just told him like i just like looked to call and like that was definitely like the age of prank calls and shit, you know? <laughs> Literally, it was just like, dude, some dude tried calling me saying he's Jeff Rally, and he did Avi Colin didn't believe it either. He's just like, what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> and then the next day, like, Ewan called me and oh, was like, now, hey, now, like, now blah, blah, blah. And I was like, holy shit, like, that was Jeff Rally, you know? And <laughs> that was kind of like my first filming job, like, where I was like, I literally was just like filming my homies and, they were like having stuff come out and being seen. And then 
Ewan had seen something of Figgy and was like, who filmed that? Then he got a hold of me and that was my first job filming. And I did, that was like extremely sorry. So I filmed like the last like two years of that. And then after that did stay gold with a minor. And then doing that, I met Mike Manziri, who was like a part of Blood Wizard. Okay. And then like I was like still skating and shit. And then he was kind of just like, dude, this, you should try to get on this brand like me and my homies have, which is Blood Wizard. And then like that kind of like refired me up to skate again too. Cause there was like something that I was like hyped to be a part of. Part, like, exactly. You know, and that it's was like, like, you got your, you got your little, like not, not to like put you in the bro with them, but you got your Kanye moment where it was like, you know, he does the producing and the rapping. You were like, I got to do, <laughs> yeah. I got to get my filming stuff off, work on stay gold, be a part of extremely sorry, which, you know, of the sorry is the third. And the, yep. you know, so it's like, you get to be a part of that. And then Stay Gold, which is two really legendary back-to-back videos. But now somebody wants to recognize you for your skate talents, which for sure. has crazy, to be, yeah. yeah, it has to be insane. And like at the time, I was probably, like, after all that, I was, like, not burned out on filming. But it was, like, like I said, I was always, like, a skater first. And, yeah, like, that shit kind of just came my way. And, like, I was at, like, on Birdhouse back then, like, with everyone. But then, like, got the flip thing. And then they wanted me to, like, ride flip board. So I was like, fuck, all right, whatever. But then, like, I was like, now nah, I don't have a board sponsor. And then it was just, like, Figgy was just, like, giving me Baker boards. And then one, then Manzuri kind of, like, lined that, the Blood Wizard shit up. And then it was just, like, he was like, let's film a part. And, like, I filmed, like, a part with Manzuri, which was pretty insane. And that was like the first blood wizard shit I did. And then eventually he kind of just like got super busy with soul tech stuff and everything he was doing that. He's like, you got to like take over the video side of this, like <laughs> passing this on to you. Yeah. And I've done all that shit ever since. So, so you, you had mentioned that when you like really got, after you got that call, first off, you didn't recognize Jeff Rowley's accent. I mean, it was just like, it sounded fake. I'm like a kid. Like why the, would this dude be calling me there's no way (laughs) so but then you you said you actually had to put your head down and start to focus and watch other videos what are some of the stuff you're watching to learn how to film better and get better at it i really like jason hernandez i really liked like the transville videos i really liked like I don't know. I really like this guy, Alex Lewandowski. He did like the Death Wish video, but back then he did like this stuff for this Bueno company. And then just like, honestly, like the happy medium dudes were like huge inspiration. The the O'Shea brothers, right? Yeah. Buster Buster and and Hunter brother. Yeah. And like, I mean, they just like Buster to me was like the first dude I was like, he was like my age and like making homie videos like we were, but like they were like looked like professional videos. You they know? did, and yeah. They had it. They sat. I remember like the feeling of the happy medium videos, feeling like even though these dudes were literally just dudes that were getting out of work to film a video in Arizona, it felt like oh, these are all actually very super sponsored, taking care of dudes, and that never was their story or was the case. No, I mean, <laughs> like, John came out of it, you know, and like yeah. John, like they all like they they all had like moments and shit, but just like and they're still put. They literally just put a video out, like, out yeah, whatever. colors, right? They just did colors, yeah, right. yeah. So it's like even as a kid, though, like that, like because they were more that was more relatable to me. And then like Tim Fulton, they they used to make these videos in Minnesota. One was called like My Skate, and that Boondoggle video, like Davis Torgerson, kind of came out of that like wow. video. I don't know. I, th- I guess at that era, like it was like VX and shit still, but like homie videos were pretty like thriving, you know? And I think like I was more hyped on that because it was like attainable. Yeah. It where, was similar. Like, it was it was like how street skateboarding was for the world. Yeah. Which like is- me and my friends and shit. Like it wasn't like this production, you know, or it seemed like it. It just seemed like whatever. And then obviously like I loved the Baker videos and shit and I think me and Figgy probably were like the most influenced by like Heath Kerchart's part and side and scene because mm-hmm. that part was Ooh. all filmed by the guy, Damn, which bro. was like where we grew up in Irvine. And it was like the first place we could go to and see the spots in person. Like these are what video 
pro spots are and like we could go look at them in real life and be like holy shit and that's like kind of why i feel like figgy skates the way he skates because exactly. it was like okay well if this is how you be a pro skater like i better do this skate. now figgy you know? is <laughs> figgy figgy is very 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 special his talents are insane um n- now you say you get on Blood Wizard, but then Missouri leaves, tells you to take over the filming thing. Do you have to now backseat the skate? After the part, do you not have to backseat the skating again and, like, focus yeah. on filming? No, because, like, that shit, Blood Wizard just, like, felt like family. And it was just, uh-huh. like, me and, at the time, like, Jerry Gurney were just, like, became super good homies. And he's insane and was just, like, fun to film and yeah. film him be a maniac. and. <laughs> Or like it was just like you know so it was like it was it didn't feel like a, a job or anything and then i didn't really film for anyone after the after stay gold came out like as a job for a while and then all my camera shit got stolen out of my car whoa let's get into that what happened I don't even know. It was like in Irvine and like, I mean, Irvine's like a super safe place, but yes. like people from other zones know that everyone leaves their shit unlocked like me. And yeah. <laughs> fucking, yeah. But the thing that was weird, was, it was like, it was all these like skateboards and my camera gear gone, like no money, no wallet, no nothing else. So it was like, it was definitely I don't a skater. know. Was Some like skaters did it. Damn. But, Damn, Never. one of us. Hey, and they say it always be your own people, fool. You feel me, dog? You gotta look out for your own, dog. Damn, cold world out but, here. Grab a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> Make sure it's leather. Honestly, then I was I was kind of hyped, like not hyped, but I was like, I don't know. Like I said, I was just like always a skater, and I was definitely filming a lot. And then I <clears throat> moved down to San Diego when I turned eighteen, and like went to Washington Street, and that kind of like re-fired up and met a bunch of new people that live down here that were like like i grew up with figgy and calling in these street skaters you know like yeah. i mean colin could rip in anything but exactly like, no colin all is of a- them like they're pretty street heavy whereas like i kind of like with the vert background like i always skated like more transition so when i found washington awesome. street i was like all these dudes were like more like i don't know what i was like into at the time you know was colin a vert baby yeah, he was like I knew it, bro. Old. I knew it. He got that like you know what I'm saying? It's like that you told when they be good like that cuz Colin is hella good. Like nobody yeah. understands like the homie can launch 3 feet off a curb cut and land mm-hmm. back in the curb cut and flip his board over. And that was always some shit to me because I was like, "Hold on now. I remember him skating transition in bowls like younger days." You feel me? Like that? It was uh, element. Stay Come old, on, yeah. He had like element twigs vert part. If you really dig deep, like Whoa. it was like Nigel, uh, Tyler Bledsoe, Colin, <clears throat> element Yo. twigs. Damn. Really okay. Yeah. See, I, I remember back. something. Okay. So now that that makes sense. You said yeah. You said. So he was like we skated vert together, you know, and then like that's what like yeah, go way back all the. He got super smoked, hung up on a backside air, and went to flat, knocked himself out, and that was the end of his vert, Ooh. his vert days. That's a good way out, you know what I'm saying? It's like Tupac. Yeah. Tupac didn't figure it out after the studio shooting. He just kept thugging. You know, Colin figured out one flat bottom. I'm gonna stop going in the air like this. There you go, Colin. Smart I could, man. I get air just as high <laughs> off a curb as I can a vert ramp. So. Exactly. Let me just go ahead and uh, stop this. So um, now you're down at SD. And you're at Washington Street. It, it, it's Working 18 at years. 7, 11, or, And then I like went to on a Blood Wizard trip to Salt Lake. Was just couch surfing at the time. And then met my wife out there through a homie. So I just like stayed in Salt Lake for like six, five months with her. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, it was starting getting cold. And I'm from California. I was like, I don't know. If I, I got can't me. do this. <laughs> and so she was able to get out of her lease and came here and then got back. And then now I have like a lady, so I can't really just be like full couch surf, like skater, like whatever, you know, like, so I got a job at Seven Eleven was the only place I could get a job at, hey, but hey. it was like, pretty, like it was on the beach. It wasn't like 
two NAR of one of, of the 7-Eleven. And then uh, was doing that for like four months, like 40 hours, five days a week, two to 10, just like solo in 7-Eleven, just like not hyped, you know? And then- Yeah, not it. That's not what you want to do. Then like my roommate at the time, Greg, who was letting us live with him, like could just tell, I, I mean, I think I got fired and I was just like, I got to figure something out. What'd you I do? Went to like, What'd you I went do? to the Butter premiere. And That's how you got fired? Part and yeah, they were just like, nah, I, I had it covered. And then I come back and like, my name was just off the, the like list. I'm like, well, I guess that's that. I see, bro. <laughs> that boy said, I got to go watch my footage. I don't give a damn about these Doritos and slushies. Kiss my ass. Nice I'm out. Yeah, I was like, I'm going. I'm gone. But yeah. so literally in like a, we're saying like 18, 19, we're, we're at like a, this, you start skating around like maybe eight or nine years old. So Probably and, 21 at this point working so, at 7 Eleven. So, yeah. So, in this 10 years of you skateboarding, your resume is nuts. <laughs> All over the place for sure. Like, yeah. it definitely was like not consistent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, but it's, I it's, skate, it's, I skate bird. I'm filming. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to skate this place now. I don't even know. It's all over the place, but that's what keeps it fun, I guess. You know? Yeah. Facts. That's like, you know, most people that literally kind of just start going, get the most out of skateboarding when you kind of stay stagnant. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you, you just went to SD. You just went to these places. Like you're in Utah with them, with, with them people. You feel me that wear the yeah. buttoned up, buttoned like, up shirts. Right, Do you and I filmed while I was living in Salt Lake. Yeah. Well, I met my lady. See, like, it, bro, wherever you can, you know, that's the best part about this shit. Yeah, facts. Um, also, y- you see, like, you see it as a blessing that you get your camera stuff taken. No one else would feel like that, you know. Everybody else is like, that kind of beats them up, you know. It's almost like you don't want to get stuck as this filmer, you want to go shred, you know. And, yeah. and, but it's like, you don't hate that you're good at filming, you just want it to be on the camera more so, is what you would say. Well, that, that or did you just want to skate? I mean, I just was like, I, I, whatever I'm hyped on at the time, you know, like at that time, I just like wasn't, I was like hyped on filming for a while. And then I was like, not, nah, you know, and then yeah. after working at 7-Eleven, I was like, Fuck, maybe I should start filming again. Like, and then that camera you just had pulled up that red and black VX, like my roommate basically bought for me because like Lizard helped me like meet that. Aaron dude that builds all the VXs out and that was like oh yeah okay early in like his days of that I think did, the, he, my did he do the like, shake jump one yeah okay. I think mine was like the third or fourth camera he built he built like beagles for or I mean probably one for him but then beagles he built a, one for lizard and then I think mine and then now his, his shit's he's so good and gnarly at it but that like just made me hyped on i was like okay i got a vx like shit was like kind of starting to go to hd but like not fully yet yeah like that little i remember that in between that's like i'm gonna say 2010 to 2015. not everybody was was still down to like have vf shit like on there you know and so like then uh i like made a blood wizard video with this vx and then basic or no before that i had like a homie video come out on transworld that was like 15 minutes long right when i got the camera what was that video and it was called lawless okay and uh it was just like random but basically like cole matthews was working at element at the time and he had like saw that video never heard of him Tran- <laughs> yeah never heard of the guy i love cole <laughs> i love love him to death that's one of my favorite people but yeah so he's yeah. working at transworld at the time no, he was working at Element. Yeah, okay. And this yep. video came out on Transworld, but he he had like just cold called me and was just like, "Hey, like, there, I watched this video you put out, and there's this one clip you film in there that you you film like this certain way, and it was like a follow line at Washington Street." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "There's this project coming up with Grayson Fletcher called In Transition. It was like the barracks was like it was like the first time they did that." And he's yeah. like, "Basically, you have like three days." at a skate park anywhere they, they want. And he's like, I just want you to film this whole thing, but I want you to film it exactly like this line. Okay. In the video you made it. And I was like, sure, whatever. And I'd like never use an HD camera or anything. And he's like, all we'll bring you a setup that feels exactly like 
holding a VX. Like all you got to do is like hold the camera. Just hold that. Yeah. (laughs) Like sounds good. Like, and then went, did that. And, um, that kind of was like, I don't know, the first people were like hyped on all the follow lines and shit. And honestly, like I would have never even saw that shit. It was like cold. Yeah. That was, that like, was something you were just following the homie it. and knew how to skate the part. You just knew how to skate the yeah, part. That was it. And literally didn't cross my mind. Like, and Bro. like, it was just like, Oh, here, A to B, you know, and cold, like saw something in that, you know, and then like that whole edit kind of blew up. And then I don't even know. Then I just kind of like, was like, Oh, like run. Oh no. Then after that Cole, we finished filming the thing. Like it didn't even come out yet. And he was just like, he was struggling with Grayson, like trying to, cause he was like the only transition filmer on the, on element at the time. Yeah. And he's just like, he was like dealing with Evan and all these other street dudes. And he's just like, I'm, he's like, how about I just like start paying you to be Grayson's personal filmer for element. Jeez. And I was like, what? Like I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I was, like, I was like, I don't got like an HD camera or anything. And he's just like, that whole setup you got, like, that's yours now. Whoa. Just, like, hooked me up and, like, hooked me up with a laptop. Just was like, here you go. Like, I'm going to help. I'm going to hook you up, you know? And then I worked under him for four years there at Element, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then he left to go to Thrasher. And then he, like, brought me with him there, you know? And so it's like he's he saw, like, that in me from – when I didn't even see it and he's yeah, like, still. like this bird's eye view of seeing that because yeah. bro, that was when those dropped, when those in trans- transition dropped, you had never really seen that type of filming skating. If you had seen somebody like trying to follow camp through a park, it seemed like a joke. Like I'm trying to keep up with you while you're shredding. You know, nobody had really ever seriously done that. Here's what we, with Ben Rayborn at some place that should be illegal. Like this should, <laughs> this should not, be a legal place to skate in but it is Farmside in kansas i had to like run down the thing right here like a freedom <laughs> bro this is insane but this is the shit that i love like it's like why i love what i do so much is because like it's seriously fun to figure this shit out with my friends you know it's yeah. like we go to this this barn and it's like it's like a puzzle like you just trying to figure out like all right how can we piece it all together and it's like okay i gotta get off here and like run down this and like and you go <laughs> and like we'll go through the door at the same time and then like you know it's just like it it's fun to do like it's not like me just standing there pressing record in the corner you know like yeah like i feel like i'm skating it feels like i'm like doing a trick half the time and like i think when i found that like when i was filming street skating in my whole life figgy and all these people like I was just like the normal fisheye or like long lens guy, you know? So I think that's like why it wasn't as exciting to me as like now where I'm like on my board, like all the time I get to like do Ollie the channel with fucking Tony Hawk. It's like little yeah. kid me is like tripping, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, but I'm, fu- I have fun doing it cause I'm still skating and it's like, I feel like I could push it like the same way you could like try to learn a new trick or like, you know, like, it, which is like cool and it keeps me like stoked on doing it you know nah bro you're you definitely you definitely have put something super special and a good visual for skateboarding and you make it it feels like you helped bring life back to it to be honest i know you you seem like a person that doesn't want to like a lot of like you know you're really humble but you make that exciting you make uh sh- transition and vert skating exciting with your filming now oh, a lot it for, really does <laughs> you feel me like for real bro honestly so now you you get over to you get over back to thrasher or you go to thrasher from element um and now it seems like you're not just grayson's filmer they're sending you on these missions to go get anybody that skate because honestly like obviously thrasher is th- street but they love people in them bowls and the backyard pools mm-hmm you know, back in the sticks. They want to get people that are literally in the cuts skating. So now you're on these missions everywhere. How does that feel? But you're, you're really filming now. Like you're filming for one of the, the, what's becoming bigger than ever for media now, not just putting out the magazine. Like this is 2015, 2016. So it's like, it's videos coming out. You're really filming. Like, how does it feel now? It's like, Oh shit. Skating's getting a little further away from me, but I have this good part with blood wizard under my belt. I'm established in that. Like, 
where's the mind at during this time? I guess like when Cole hit me up about the Thrasher thing, it was like my first job was for Thrasher was to go to all the Vans Park series. Yep. And like cover those. There was like five or six of them or whatever. And like, damn, I, I missed those. Was, I know they were the best contest. Dude. But, so that was like, <clears throat> and all my friends go to those, you know, like, cause they're all the transition skaters or whatever. Yep. And, uh, I definitely would used to party pretty gnar, <laughs> like not drink fucking it's too easy with all your homies in the park at the yeah. bowl or in a backyard, whatever. But so like when Cole was like, I'm going to trust you to do this. I was like, all right, I got to like fucking not blow it. You I got, know? yeah, like, I got to hone in, so like, hone in. Like that, I stopped drinking. And then when I did that, I was like able to kind of just like focus on like being okay with like not being a pro skater anymore you know like because it was like all right like i need to figure this shit out cole's got my back i got this insane sick opportunity with thrasher like i want to take it seriously and like do this and be the best i can you know and then that like definitely opened like so many doors like even just working for thrasher like of what's possible and like where to go and like you know, like e- ever since then, it's like all these crazy places I get to go and skate and film at. It's like people just like send me shit, you know, and it's yeah. like it's so sick that like and it's like to have like a just like a place like Thrasher that does support like any skater, or anyone that backs them. Like it's like, hey, get all your friends together. Let's go to this crazy ass ramp in, Milwaukee. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, bro. Let's go to this freaking cut and get yeah. clips. And they're just like, yeah, go for it. Do it. You know, like, it's like, I don't know. It's a dream job, you know? It's, yeah. It's, and like, I guess back to like, whenever I was like going to be full filmer, I just like thought I was going to be a, a, like not skating anymore. But honestly, it's kind of done the opposite. Exact opposite. Where, you got to get it in every warm up day yeah. or ramp you pull up to, you get to get yours in and you're for still sure. keeping up. It, it's been awesome. And it's like, I, the stuff I film is the stuff I would choose to skate anyways. It's not like, Oh, like I'm actually a really gnarly ledge skater, you know, but I just (laughs) film in the bowl really good. You know, it's like, I I, shit I want to skate. So it's like, and it's like, if I ever really want to get a clip, like I could just hand the camera to any of my homies and they're always down. So it's like, I always wanted to ask you about that. How does it feel knowing? I think I made a skate line joke about it, but I don't remember because I've ran my mouth for so long. But I, I want to ask you, how does it feel knowing that no one will be able to film like you in a bowl, like of yourself? Like you'll never I get mean, to see, you know what I'm saying? Like there's nobody even, I don't think there's like a few names that really have good follow cam skills. Like, bro, you might be by yourself. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely like dudes who could do it. And it's like, honestly, like, you know, who's like one of the best. He, he hasn't like done it with like real cameras, but Kieran Woolley like oh, he's, he's like, like she like could film on his phone but like good you he's know and it's like sh- but it's like he can rip like and it's like that's why i tell anyone that really skates it's like i know i'm not gonna fall on a kick turn yeah like I, you know like yeah when i'm like alling a channel or something i'm a little more like but that there's definitely gonna be some shake in the camera like because i'm like Come on. not 100 percent on the camera but like when i'm every follow on i'm doing like i'm not worried about falling yeah. like ever you know and it's like if it happens like it happens and i know how to slam so it's like whatever but any skater that can rip around a bowl could do what i could do you just have to like get to the point of being able to nah, focus son, on- they can't because they would have done it and you only named one person in history and you know everybody you skate with but, all the transition okay, skaters Hawk's really good at follow film on his phone too who like tony hawk could do some good follow count, film on he doesn't his phone. count don't count him what are you doing <laughs> he's good at it though what are you doing like he's usually the guy like the right, this then, weekend hey, then like, give him a camera guy. give him let's start back park series let's give his ass a camera and see how he do all right since that's how we giving it up um oh mark pimple pimple says wasn't chris in a band once nope never okay so you don't know chris mark Sorry, right? man. yeah whoever you are you got the wrong you got the wrong gregson Sorry about that. There's a question here about BMXing or filming Trey Jones, which is pretty, yeah, that shit's pretty fun. I mean, 
it's definitely scary this big hunk of metal like yeah. not what i'm used to yeah because their but kick out like, is way different but their kick out's way less okay. so it's like that's true. honestly like sometimes i could be like if i'm like filming fisheye in a channel it's like i'm like holy shit, i'm about to get hit like 20 times for sure with a board with a skateboard because it's like i'm in the danger zone the, they're gonna bail every try like with the bmxers it's like they're like i ain't bailing like i'm gonna <laughs> Commit to this shit no matter what. So are you ready? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so it's like I can honestly trust them more than a skater. The skaters and like depending on what it is, you know, because it's they can't bail like we can. Yeah. On a skate. We literally just do it sometimes just to do it. So shout out to bailing. Uh, yeah. um, you know, it's gnarly, dude, and it challenges me. It's like, which is why it's so fun because it's like those dudes are hauling ass and they're going high and they're doing gaps that i don't even see with my eyes because it's just not it's not feasible for us yeah it's not feasible for us like filming it is insane and it's like fun to challenge myself in that and like you know it it's it's cool shout out to that so now after park series kind of wraps up um that first one or however what do, what do you want to now? Like, what do you get into? Like, it's like, this wraps up. You did five of these. You start meeting, like, you start meeting more dudes and going on trips. But what what's happening a little after that? After that, I did do, like, my first X Games contest. Film. Okay. And, like, that was, like, super rad. Like, Chase had, like, done it maybe twice for Street League. Yeah. Like, this was, like, early Street League, you know? Like, like they do them but like to have like someone fish eye out there like he was that chase gabor dude was definitely the first one out there doing that like rolling around you know mm-hmm. and then x games hit me up because i think of the they saw some of the fall stuff and they they used to do x games qualifiers before like and they were in uh boise idaho and they basically were like hey do you want to come out and like or like we have that we want you to try to film the contest, but we want it, you to test it out first, like at the qualifiers. So mm-hmm. I went to the qualifiers to like try out follow filming in a contest. Yeah. And when I got there, like so X amount of people didn't show up. So they were like, can you skate in it too? And then I was like, like, I guess, but like <laughs> in my head, I was like, I only had to film the finals live. Okay. So I was like, I'll skate the qualifiers, not make it. And then like just, <laughs> you know, but like somehow I got lucky or they just like wanted a good show. So they're like, oh, you're in the finals. <laughs> like, what the f- so like, What are you doing? What are you doing to me? Sabotaging my plans. Like, yeah. So then I had to like film the whole contest. I mean, you've seen me out there. It's like a backpack and yeah. like and, and earphones. It's like a whole thing. And it's like. I had to do that throughout the whole contest. And then they're like, all right, up next, Chris Gregson. And it's like, take the backpack off, like put all this shit down and then like try to drop in. And, <laughs> skate. and it's like, I skated like shit. Cause it was, I'm just like, it yeah, yeah, just it's too shit, much. It's so. too much. It, does that feel, <laughs> did it feel like super unnatural or did it feel like it just, it I really do like, both of these? No, I mean that it felt fine, but it was more just like, I didn't like when I'm out there filming, it's like, I'm just like running around wherever I can be like, you know, so like then when I like went to skate, I was just like already like tired and like not like in like skate brain, you know, like I'm in like filmer brain, you know, so it was just hard to like switch it that fast. Like not just skate either competitive brain too. In games, you know, like (laughs) just like this level of whatever. So it was stressful. I was like, I'm definitely not doing both ever again. So like, but the filming shit was fun. And then I went to Minneapolis that year. It was like the first year they did it there. And yep. then that was like the first time I had like experience, like filming, like in a big contest. And, you know, it was sick that X Games was like the first to like trust me to do that, you know, like, cause I'd never done, I was so, I was hitting Jared Lucas up, like Chase, like anyone I thought had done anything remotely like this, like how's like just for any advice. Cause I didn't know what to expect. And what was the best key of advice that they gave you from either one of those dudes? I don't even like, I don't think anything they told me like could have, <laughs> could have helped <laughs> or prepared you for yeah. what was about to happen. <laughs> the first one was really hectic. Like 
they gave me this camera that was like a GoPro with no screen on it. And it wasn't a GoPro. So I didn't know the like fisheye depth. And I literally was followed. The only screen I had was the Jumbotron. So like they cut to my camera. Wait, so they gave I, you they oh, gave you a a a, a pro go? Well, no, you feel me? It wasn't. Yeah, it was like this. The production company had made this camera. Like it was like no brand or anything, and they were just like, "This is what you're gonna film the contest," in. and it didn't have a handle, nothing. So like, just for my own peace of mind, I like duct taped it to my handle that I have because it just felt better. He's like this. Out there. <laughs> yeah, like me filming a contest with this little thing. I'm just like. At least if it's in a handle, it looks cooler. <laughs> like, yeah, at least. But it was just like, I'm just like follow filming Nija staring up at the Jumbotron, making sure that I, I have them in frame because like, I don't know, have anywhere else to look like, Whoa. and I've never used this camera. So I don't know like the distance to be like, it was, it was so stressful and it was like, yeah. So everyone after that's been like so mellow because that one was very hectic. I was just like a different one. So now that was 2017 when they first did that we kind of yeah. keep rolling you're a full established big filmer at this point like you go to the big contest you you actually have the good videos they're going viral they're getting seen your angles are the ones that are getting reposted at this time now it's like okay well not the pro skateboarder but a respected filmer do like it not just like a little job i'm not just assigned to anybody i'm a thrasher i'm traveling um, what takes place is, or is your next project following after a little after X games? Then it just like began like figuring out how to juggle everything. Okay. You Schedule. Know? Now we're getting schedules like, down. We're turning this to a business. Then it was like, Holy shit. Like what is like time management? And like, also like, it's hard to know like what, not like in a weird way, like what you're worth, but it's like, I don't know, like, you know, all these people are coming. Hey, can you film this? Can you film this? Can you film yeah. this? Like, whatever, you know, and then like, now I have a manager that helps me with like the stuff that I don't know how to deal with, you know, because it's yeah. like once these other jobs started coming my way that were outside of skateboarding, it's like, I don't know how to deal with these like suits. Like I do like Cole at Thrasher, you know, he's like my good homie, you know, yeah. it's just like a different world. So like, eventually started to yeah need you yeah, had to get some help like to juggle all that stuff and then i think now and then it kind of just has been the same ever since like i feel like i've just gotten super lucky at like getting to come up with ideas and cool projects and thrashers down to like support me and my friends and now i actually kind of do an event which is swamp fest you started swamp fest. You started that dirty, nasty, disgusting ash. <laughs> That's my friend Trey Jones' event, but I do help him with all the all the skate stuffs. All me, like helping with all that. Place it's is it's disgusting. insane. That is the most disgusting <laughs> thing. Swamp fest is so nasty. All right, the video comes out tomorrow on Thrasher. That literally shot. Go watch that because it is hectic. Yeah. Swamp Fest is literally just unprotected fun in the red light yeah. district. That's what that is. Like, no. <laughs> Put some hubba bubba around that. That it shit is, is gnarly, bro. Oh, my God. Can you explain a Swamp Fest to these humans? Like, when you get there, first off, last year, arson, 100%. Not going to say it. I don't know why nobody has caught y'all yet. You wasn't there. I know you wasn't there because you was at my house. I got your alibi. Don't worry about it. But the shit that takes place at Swamp Fest, bro, can you bring us into that? Oh, my goodness. So, I mean, it's all the mind of my friend Trey Jones, who's a pro BMXer. And uh, he basically just gathers all the wood and the sponsors and the money he can every year. And whatever he could get, he builds a plywood masterpiece of skatable and rideable obstacles like if you want to whatever you want to however you want to call it but like the other year he built like a 30 foot castle and like had everything skatable and then this year he went pirate themed so like an 80 foot burnt ramp inside a ship and the, the whole thing is that he burns it all to the ground at the end of the event but 
he only started doing that because he didn't want to clean it up or like figure out what to do with everything. So he's like, "Smart, how do I get rid of this? Like, and I don't have to do anything. He's like, just let everyone burn it. You know? <laughs> then he was like, Oh, actually I should build like a centerpiece to burn. Like that yeah. would be cool. Like, yeah. that's, that's the castle. I'm like, you know, it's like, I don't even know. It's just like evolves every year into like, whatever like you know he learned he sees what people are hyped on and not hyped on and like what works and doesn't work and now we have like a bunch of skate brands on board thrashers like kind of like helped us the last three years getting people out there and She's like the light and skate world of it because hey you my boy and you've been my boy for yeah, a long time process. y'all been you've been my boy for a long time don't never invite me to that shit i'm yeah. not going i'm not going we're all going next year, dude. No, I'm not. Hell no, nah, I'm not. <laughs> I'll put in my two weeks. I'm not going to no Swamp Fest. Hell no. Nah. Ew. That's for everybody to be. That's for me to watch. I do enjoy it to see it visually. Straight line live at Swamp Fest. Dude. Nah, bro. I shower way too much to end up at Swamp Fest. I put too much deodorant and cologne on to be at Swamp Fest. Shout out to everybody that goes, though. Now, let's kind of like, that's like current. Let's kind of go back because if you go on bloodwizard.com, you see boards with your name on it. Yes. So we have been commended as a pro skateboarder and you have a hell of a blood wizard part. I love it. It's amazing. Thanks. Like explain that to get, you know, almost everything you've wanted from this, from this young age of having this board from this Tony Hawk game, pro skateboarder, actual filmer, you know, and your, your ability and your style, bro. Like, your skating is very, very good. Like, I love to see you skateboard. You know, your flick on your front flip disasters to come to Fakie. All your finesse is on point. So how does that feel? To get, you know what I'm I saying? Mean, that board, bro. It's like a little kid dream, you know? It's like just to have that, your look down, it's like, holy shit, my name's on that thing, you know? It's pretty yeah. insane. Yeah. So that was sick. And it was like, I mean, it felt cool to turn pro for something that a brand that meant something to me you know like it was like i felt like it was like us that built this thing up like so it was like cool to like i don't know you know i was like the first person that they ever turned pro like chris sen had a board and ben cron had a board but like they like i was the first person that the company had turned pro you know so it was like cool that it was like even people like recognize blood wizard as like a real Thing. company that yeah. like it was like you know and now we have like in kowalski and mommy and like to like be able to like find straight mommy beast. My manager like yeah like our my manager that helps me with the filming like he manages mommy and she was like 16 and he's like you should come skate and film with her you know and then i just like look at her now she's the sickest you know and like we were able to like turn her pro and it's just like yeah it's been crazy like from me turning pro to getting to turn people pro and like the fact that i still could film parts and people still want to buy my boards pretty insane yeah bro you, you inspire guys all the time so now we're gonna get right into it mr gregson i gotta ask you a question sir who was on your mount rushmore of skateboarding Ooh. Top four all time. No if ands, or buts, or fifths, or babies. I guess it since it's Mount Rushmore, it's gotta be like the like the the legends, right? Yeah. It's your it's your Mount Rushmore. It's who your favorite four skateboarders all time. We'll do two uh we'll do Tony is for sure on there. Bob for sure on there. Uh GT and Tony Trujillo. Jesus freaking Christ, that list of people is amazing. Oh my yeah. God. That's that probably was... like but it's those that those they all inspired me in some way, shape, or form. Now I gotta ask you another question. What is your favorite X Games moment of all time, my good sir? This one, like, I mean, I'm gonna Tony's nine's obvious, but yeah. Cause that was like why I started skating for sure. Facts. Like if that didn't happen, but there's this line Bob did that. Like, I, I don't remember what year it is, but it's like the best vert run ever done. Like in Tony Hawk and Chris Miller on the mic. And like, 
we were just talking about this and I, Tony was saying that Chris Miller had to like put the mic. He just like threw the mic down because he was just like yelling so much. Like, but you could still hear him yelling, even though he had thrown the mic. Off the <laughs> it was not crazy. Like, and like, even just hearing like the commentate, like their voices and like this line Bob goes for like a minute and a half or something. It's just so insane. Just but nuts. Just obviously right. the, and then the fakey five Oh fakey flip first tries like, Bro. Just unbelievable. the best pick probably ever done but it's just like yeah so many good x games moments but yeah those ones the vert ones stick into or like the ones that stick with me for sure well mr gregson i i leave off with some kind words and then i get into a freestyle so i want to tell you which i'm pretty sure you don't you know what i'm saying cool kind words but you don't like a whole bunch of attention listen um to, to add what you've added with your pocket of filming has been, need I say, probably this one of the sickest things to happen to skateboard filming and ever. Your follow cam abilities and literally highlighting these guys and almost bringing transition and bringing back vert skateboarding, like filming completely. You know, this like you said, you could just people point and shoot and it looks good. And the dude that you like is ripping and Grant Taylor's flying through the air. But whoever can get in there with them and that's like your blessing and your ability. We are super thankful for that. That is so dope, bro. So thank you for giving skateboarding that. We love everybody that adds to this and just gives us more entertaining moments. And you're one of the forefathers of that. So thank you. And I'm proud that you got to do what you set out to do, which was film and skate pro skateboarder, literally legendary filmer. And you get to kick it with Tony Hawk. So that's just a goaded moment. And so do I, cause he's my uncle now. So shout yeah. out to us winning in life, Chris. And I'm he's skateboarding his uncle. He's all of our uncle. He really is unk bro. He's like Snoop Dogg, but like Tony Hawk, he literally <laughs> is our Snoop Dogg. All right. Tony. Keep, Tony. <laughs> Wait, can anybody, can y'all hear the beat? Did I already do this one? This one sounds familiar. Uh, it's a million bars. I'm getting out of here. One second. Okay. Put words in the chat. So your boy can rap. He on that vape. Shouldn't be doing that. But that's okay. He living his life. He was out with Figgy and them. Day and night. Getting clips. Stack them up. Stay gold. Film that. Then he did. Wait, that's extremely sorry. It was before all of that. But I'm not gonna cap in my raps. Working at 7 Eleven. He said, This is bullshit. This ain't giving me to heaven. So he left, went skating, met his lady, did his thing. He was up, an SD. That park he swang through the corners. Big Channel Street. Wait, it was Washington. No, don't put G Unit in the chat. I'm rapping. All right. With the flow, your boy be a best. You are my dog, Chris, but don't invite me to Swamp Fest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've been blessed. You were up against you, but you passed every test. They stole your camera. You didn't give a damn. Went hard in skating. You a pro going ham. You the man with the angle when you up in a bowl. Every video you do, my bro, is cold. Tom Shar, Tony Hawk, I can name a whole list. Everybody could do it but they can't do it like this. You are the GOAT. Chris Gregson, I didn't even know I had more beat left. Shout out you, Blood was He said, stop, DBC, you want me to, I gotta stop, I was I was gassing. No, you're killing it, DBC, dude. DBC Ash, sick. hold on, nah, DBC Ash just told me to shut up. They told me to shut the hell up. DBC Ash, I don't wanna shut, can I, I can't rap? Nah, hold on, Chillin' Pete, you the homie already. Real quick, Chris Gregson, I want DBC Ash to talk to me. Should I stop rapping forever or just today? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't give a shit. Look, hey, Chris, thank you for coming, bro. We really wanted to talk to you for a long time. We're glad we got to get that perspective of you. Um, Whatever's next, like I we'll told you. We'll both be at X Games Adventure, right? Ventura, tickets are on sale. If you have not got your tickets, go to xgames.com, X Games Ventura. Type in the link into your Google thing. Go and just go there. You feel me? Come say what's up to me and Gary. Come say what's up. We'll be there. We're real approachable. He'll be in a leather jacket. I'll be looking fresh. It's all good. Yep. Appreciate everybody. We are out of Grind and Unwind episode 42. God damn, I've been doing this for a minute. Peace. Peace.